Welcome back to House of Horns. My name is Victor Corona, a.k.a. Victor Producer. And joining me is former uh, Rams uh, B reporter uh, Gilbert Manzano, who now does it for the uh, the, covers the NFL for uh, Sports Illustrated. Gilbert, how are you doing? Uh, Are you excited? We're three weeks away from the NFL draft now. Have you done all your research or do you still need uh, more to do? No, there's, there's always more to do, but it feels like also like, okay, you do research during the pro days and that's always in March. There's a couple still going on in April, but this, this part feels like, all right, it's time for like a little bit of a break. Cause you cover free agency, you cover the combine, but then it's like, ah, you got to start doing more research for the NFL draft. So that's what we're going to be talking. We're going to be talking about that today. That's why we're here to discuss uh, NFL uh, draft needs for the Rams. And we said, how about we do a two-parter? We've been away for a bit for a couple of weeks, so we did not you know, get to the Tredavious White signing. We'll touch on it a little bit today, but defense today on uh, for the Rams draft needs, and then next week, offense for the Rams uh, draft needs, and then, you know, eventually we'll do a full breakdown for like a preview for the NFL draft. So good to be back, though. Yeah, I mean, we got a lot to get to. I mean, we've been away for a couple of weeks, so uh, let's right, let's jump right into it, Gilbert. I mean, we have a lot to discuss since we last spoke, but um, we'll we'll. You know, we'll get into your engagement questions. Let me just, you know, since let me just go over everything that's happened since we were last on. Uh, we we uh, we covered, you know, since uh, Aaron Dono announced his retirement. So let's get right into it. You know, uh, the Saints are relocate, relocating their training camp uh, to UC Irvine. Uh, the Rams will will be in a new location to be announced. So. Uh, they're, where they're going to have their training camp is up in the air, Gilbert. We'll we'll find out in the next couple of weeks, from what I've heard. Um, there's a new kickoff rule um, that you know during the NFL owners meetings that was passed. How is that going to affect the Rams? We'll get into it as well. I mean, there's you know should they use a running back? How you know I I don't think we'll see the the kick returner we saw last year with the rams i think they're probably going to need to invest in the kick returner now with the new kickoff um the rams as you talked about signed tradavius white to a one-year deal he's coming off an achilles he's had some injury issues so we'll see how he 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 is you know he kind of go he kind of how long they're going to give him to recuperate when is he going to be ready and all that gilbert uh, i don't know if you have any thoughts on those uh, first three items that I've already gone through. Yeah, I'll, I'll be quick on the Irvine thing. It, it's a nice facility. Obviously, the Rams having the training camp there. I like it. Two fields there, and you kind of go around, and you get a good view, at least for reporters. I think for fans, I think they enjoy it, too. A little bit of a drive, but if you're in Orange County, you like that the Rams were, were there. But that's why the Saints you know, swooped in very quickly when it was available, and I'm pretty sure the Rams are going to make it work in Woodland Hills. Like The facility is going to be uh, – gonna be, they're going to start building the facility, but they'll have probably like a kind of a temporary practice site. That will be my guess, but you never know. Uh, and then obviously the one that's really interesting is Tredavious White. And I like it. Obviously, he's a, he has injuries con- injury concerns. You know, it didn't really cost him too much. He, need, he, need, he needs like a prove it deal. So he got it with the LA Rams. And if he's healthy, he's a very good cornerback. And the more I think about it, it's like, okay, you could bet on the injuries and, and, and maybe like some upside there because it doesn't force you to panic in the draft. Like we all thought a week ago or yeah. two weeks ago, you got to go cornerback. You need a cornerback or even edge rusher. There's just so many needs on defense. Now it's like, you know what? I kind of like the cornerback group. Like if Darius Williams figures it out again with the, with the Rams in the second stint, if Tr- Tr- Davis White stays healthy, that's two veteran guys who are proven players. And then, oh, he can still develop Trey Tomlinson and Kobe uh, Durant. So, you know, that definitely helps out. I'm not saying they should settle at cornerback, but you feel much better about that. So, it's a gamble to bet on somebody coming off a torn Achilles, torn ACL. It was just a lot of bad luck for Tredavious White. And then there was times where, like, he was healthy, like, to, or at least healthy enough to play, and he got burned a couple of times. But maybe he wasn't ready to go because of all the injuries and rehab he has to deal with. So if he somehow figures it out, you know, it'll be good. But I, th- I just like more of the veteran presence because it's so hard for cornerbacks to develop and go into the fire and be a starter. So. I like it as kind of an insurance just in case for the for the ups, upside, the veteran presence, and then so you don't have to kind of panic in the draft either. Yeah, and you also you're you're kind of seeing how they're building this defense now without Aaron Donald. You're not gonna 
have yeah. that, you know, guy in the middle, you know, put, putting the pressure on the offensive line. So you're going to need to hold on a little longer in coverage. So it makes sense for them. And they're, 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 they're going out and, you know, spending money on the secondary, which was one of the things we've never seen them do. You know, we, we talked about the offensive line and then we talked about, you know, their secondary and they've proven us wrong during this free agency, which we're going to get into, uh, you know, that'll be the last bit of news and notes that I'll, I'll talk about. But the other item, Gilbert, is we have a Stetson Bennett update. Finally, uh, Les Need said that the Rams have a commitment from Stetson Bennett. He's been working out in Dallas and has been in communication with uh, new quarterbacks coach Dave Ragone. So it sounds like he'll be in camp for spring and they're going to go from there. So at least we know that he's he's going he's coming back now. Yeah, and it's like less pressure now that they have Jimmy G. But I guess you might need him for the first two games because he's suspended. But it's less pressure. Hey, Stetson, I don't, I don't know what the heck happened last year. You know, m- maybe you figure it out this year, and you don't have to be like. Remember last year they drafted him like with, with the thought of him being the backup right away. It did not have a backup for for a while, and it was like Stetson, go be the guy. And that just seems like a lot for for the for the rookie quarterback. Obviously, there's quarterbacks to start right away, but for Stetson, he wasn't he wasn't in that position to be a franchise quarterback. It was more like we have your job. You have you have a, a responsibility to be the backup. He couldn't do it, so. That left the Rams in a tough place. Now they have Jimmy G just in case. But the problem is you got to rely on Stetson to maybe be okay for the first two games of the season. Or maybe you sign a fourth quarterback. Obviously, there's more options uh, in today's game with the, with all the quarterback changes. So it's good that he's back make, trying to make it work. But uh, it's it's less that you're, you're uh, expecting out of him. So that's a good thing. Yeah, and I mean, we'll see what happens. Like you said, I mean, th- there's a chance they can draft another quarterback. There's a chance that they sign another one, and then you can move off of him if things don't work out. Um, you know, hey, some one of the things I've been really impressed with teams now in, in today's NFL is that when they know that they made a mistake, they move on. Like, they, they're not going to waste their time, you know, especially for a fourth-round pick. But it's good to see that he's doing well and he's working his way back. So that that's something to kind of keep an eye on during training camp. And lastly, Gilbert, I kind of want to go over with you. Uh, and I, I want to give a shout out to Jordan Rodrigo of The Athletic because she did a great art. She wrote a great article. She was able to uh, interview uh Rams Vice President of Football Operations, Tony Pastors, uh, during the owners meeting. And uh, like just kind of going through the article, I got a lot of tidbits from it that I kind of wanted to go over with you because I thought there's a lot of nuggets in here that I thought were really interesting. And, you know, let me go over some of the highlights uh, about what she wrote. Um, they, She said that um, one of the things she wrote about was the fact that the Rams went in, you know, before free agency thinking that they weren't going to be able to re-sign Kevin Dotson. So they, they, their focus was on Jonah Jackson. That's who they want. That was their target in free agency. Once they were able to, once they were able to sign Kevin Dotson before the tampering uh, period, then that kind of set in motion. Okay, we're instead of us waiting around for Coleman Shelton's free agent market to play out, we're also going to sign. You know, uh, we're going to sign Jackson as well. So that kind of set the things in motion. So I thought that was pretty interesting because I didn't know about that. So I, I just wanted to get your thoughts on that. Yeah, I, I thought they would have, you know, kept Coleman Shelton because, you know, he's he's a versatile, could play guard and center. He had a nice a nice starting role as a center. And then also he would have been cheaper, too. So when they got Kevin Dotson, when you sign players before free agency, like that's why I would like when people always say, hey, like, do you have to be under the cap at, at, at a certain point? And like, yeah, there's, there's rules to it. But like you want to, regardless of there's no rule, you want to see what you're working with. You want to see how much money you have to spend when free agency opens. So when Kevin Dotson was in the books, they, oh, cool, now we can keep doing this and doing that. And when you have a, a long-term contract extension, you can move the money around. The cap hit is not as big. It's not like a, like the downside of the franchise tag is all the money's in one year, so you can't move it around. So with Kevin Dotson on the books, and I'm sure that helped out the Rams with moving the money, money around. Now go get it, be aggressive. Go get Jonah Jackson. He was your main guy because you have that flexibility. Unfortunately, I did not benefit Coleman Shelton, but Coleman Shelton's with the Bears on. He's probably going to be the center for uh, Caleb Williams. So he got his money in free agency. So that, maybe that's part of the reason. Like 
we kept saying, you know, the Rams don't pay or, or go and spend top money on guards. Well, things right. kind of worked out. And when they drafted Steve Avila, knowing in the back of the mind, their minds that he could play center, that opens the doors for a bunch of opportunities. So when they got when not when they got Kevin Dotson, I was surprised about that. They got it done. And like you mentioned in that story, they were surprised too. So when that got worked out, definitely you go after Jonah Jackson and and I can't wait to see what they do in the trenches with that those three guys in the middle. Yeah, and I mean, and then they were able to go and tender Alaric Jackson, which was another thing that was important to them. So another item that I thought was interesting was that the duration of the free agent contracts and how they align with the contracts of Puka Nakua, Steve Avila, Kyron Williams. And it's something that we talked about during the, the whole, you know, when we brought up the Rams, you know, Super Bowl window with their core players. That was before we got the, the retirement announcement of Aaron Donald, but we kind of figured this was their plan and, you know, kind of just, you know, it, it was good to, to hear, um, uh, what is what is his name again? I need uh, uh Tony Pastors kind of mentioned that, and so I thought that was interesting as well. There, there, the other thing too, Gilbert, that you know they that they talked about was the fact that you know it works both ways. So the players want shorter deals because that way that allows them to go back into free agency. Mm -hmm. And then the other thing with the Rams was for them is it allows them to evolve according to their talent. So let's say. Matthew Stafford decides to retire, or like we saw with Aaron Donald, they retire. It allows them to evolve their roster according to their talent. So I thought that was also very interesting uh, from what we what we got there in that article. Yeah, and and, and to be honest, in the NFL, like the three year contract sounds about right. Like like when you get a five six year contract, it's rare when the player plays out the five or six years, or, or at least without without some kind of tinkering. Like hey, put the money down the line and a restructured deal you're going to get cut things like that like it's just rare when it happens to four to five years I, like i can't remember the last time a high profile quarterback had the same contract like when patrick mahomes signed that massive 10 million dollar deal uh what four years ago three years ago we all knew he wasn't going to have the same contract for the for yeah. the duration of 10 years he's restructured he's resigned and because people like the star players like hey why is that guy ahead of me you got to make you got to change it again it happened with aaron donald so Things like that, at least with for the short term, sounds right. And then when you're talking about, we we always discuss rookie quarterbacks on a contract. Well, now it's like a Puka Nakua or Steve Avila or Kyron Williams. These are guys who are gonna get paid in a couple of years. So you know, having kind of go through that because you know none of these guys were first round picks. So that means they want to have a four year contract. It's not yep. there's not a five year option there with the with the rookie guys on the you know, uh, first rounders. So. That's three years right there, and have everybody on the same timeline. Same thing for Matthew Stafford and Cooper Cup. Like, honestly, honestly, I don't know how long it's going to be for Cooper Cup, but two, three, maybe. Stafford looked like he could play three years after what he did last year, so it, it all lines up pretty well. Yeah, and the there and the way they're building this team with the trenches is they're going to run the ball. They're they're planning to protect Matthew Stafford because they want if, if they want to keep him around for another 2 3 years, the way they're going about it is the right way. They're going to run the ball and try to limit, you know, the exposure that Matthew Stafford has in the pocket. So I think that's another big thing which, you know, and talking you talked about Aaron Donald, that's another thing that was brought up and I thought that was another interesting tidbit here was his cap number. So as you know, the restructure we heard about before his retirement was always part of their plan, Gilbert. So like for people who are like, well, it's kind of, you know, weird, the timing of this, and maybe he's going to come back. I mean, he even, you know, when, when, uh, past horse, uh, when he did the extension with, with, uh, with Aaron Donald, he said, I'm playing two years. And so then the Rams added a third year just in case. So, and then the way the cap numbers is going to work is, um, Aaron Donald's cap uh, hit is going to be 24 million for 2024, and then it's going to be because of the restructure, it'll be nine million in 2025. The other thing that was interesting as well from the article was the fact that um, Aaron Donald, uh, his rights are still with the Rams. So even if he decides to come back, he can't just sign with any team because he retired. He, the Rams still have his rights because he has a no trade clause. Yeah, so you know Aaron Donald is a star player, and he can command some some leverage. And it's like, yeah, like you mentioned, he he's gonna probably play for two years, but you should pay me for three. And he's already on the books for twenty twenty four. 
And they kind of just, I'm sure they sat down and figured out, hey, like, you're going to retire. You still got your money's coming your way, but can you kind of spread it out in a couple of years? And it's kind of like similar to when Tom Brady retired a couple of years ago. Like, like you think you're not playing, you're not paying that star quarterback, but there's a lot of dead money on the books because of the contract. Like, hey, he's still owed that money. He just retired and you got to put it somewhere and that's dead money. So like last year, people thought the Buccaneers are going to be terrible because they need a one year reset with all that dead money. You can't pay people. Well, they got savvy and they paid for Baker Mayfield with, you know, Aaron Donald's a little different. You know, they, they were able to spread out the money. They, they didn't really hurt their cap space. Also, they didn't really have anybody on the books because of what they did with, you know, cutting Jalen Ramsey and, and guys like that, Bobby Wagner. So they all, they, I think, you know, they did a good job of, of just in case Aaron Donald doesn't make it to year three. And like you mentioned, it, it, they all had an idea it's going to be two years. So it was pretty well prepared and it all, it all worked out. Obviously, you want to have Aaron Donald to play one more year, but it didn't really hurt their salary cap. Yeah. And I mean, the way they, I mean, this was great, honestly. Like, and then the last thing, you know, and I'll, I'll go over because I, I just want to praise this article just because, I mean, I got so much information from it. I mean, if you haven't, make sure you go and you check out um, Jordan Rodriguez's article on The Athletic. You know, please. You know, go and support good journalism, man, because I, I know, you know, just like you who does it for Sports Illustrated, I, you know, there's less and less of you, of you guys out there. So I just want to make sure that we get people to go and, you know, put some eyeballs on the on this article. And the last thing uh, I'll go over here, Gilbert, and it has to do with uh, Matthew Stafford and Cooper Cup, as we talked about with their cap numbers now. They're, they're going to play under the their cap numbers, you know, you know, and um, – it, it, their big numbers are like 49 million and then you have uh 24 i think for cooper cup i um i'm trying to go i'm trying to remember what the number is but either way um the uh, the the rams are spending 195 million dollars of cash pay or, or 195 million on their offenses which you know is that's a lot of capital to use on your offense which means the defense is gonna it's gonna you know your draft capital is gonna go to your defense um and so one of the things too that was interesting from it was the restructure so if they're gonna restructure contracts it's gonna be with stafford and cooper cup because once they're done once they sign this year's draft picks they're gonna have between four and eight million dollars in cap space so one of the things that we saw now too with the owners meeting was that they moved back the trade deadline so how do you do you think if the Rams are in position, will they go and trade for a will, will that make them, uh, you know, uh, uh, trade, you know, candidates to go out and improve their team? And does that mean that, you know, they'll have to restructure Stafford and Cooper Cup? Yeah. So, like, I, I think, you know, you're, you're spot on or, or saying if they do restructure, this is more for the trade deadline in October. Nothing right now. Like I saw, obviously we saw Stephon Diggs getting traded today. Uh, but after that, like, I think all the guys who, need, who were like kind of a question marks or their futures up in the air. And the most of them got, got them taken care of. Like, obviously, like maybe Von Miller could be a could be cut soon. But do you want to bring them back with the Rams? Probably not at that age, at, at that age. So there's not a lot of guys out there right now. Obviously, it, it could be. Uh, injuries in training camp or, or or whatever happened or maybe there's a guy you know who who gets cut that's, that's probably what i meant more they get cut in training camp or before training camp and you want to go get that guy so or even they get cut after the cut down from whatever 90 to whatever number it is so things like that but i think for the the rams are now they're now at a point where like okay the roster is looking good you're gonna probably fill more needs in the draft and you're looking pretty solid that's gonna be your crew so but if you're gonna be a, a super one contender and you want to you know you know be like the final four and the nfc or go, or go to the super bowl you you want to have that flexibility like the downside is like you're kicking more money down the line you want to have a clean book for next year and the year after that but i think the rams are getting to a point where like just in case somebody's out there that they really want to get you better have money available so i say do it because they, they did a great job of building this roster to become a playoff roster where nobody thought they're going to do it some people did like yourself victor so mm -hmm. they were a year ahead now it's like it's kind of like what the Texans are doing. The Texans are loading up right now. Yeah. The Rams are still kind of like they're making moves, but it's more a patient approach. I like that better, to be honest. I kind of stick with the draft, get some veterans here and there. Don't splurge too much. Don't reach too hard. And then by the time the, the October deadline comes around, it can help you. But then again, I guess how many moves they, 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 they how many moves in October this year 
really helped out a team to win the Super Bowl. But then again, the Chiefs are always the Chiefs, right? Well, they McCall Hartman. I mean, I mean, he uh, he did win the Super Bowl. You're right. Yeah, yeah he didn't I mean, do much, but he I won know. that. He won that game. You're right. <laughs> so I can't complain about that. Yeah. I mean, I only brought it up just because he was really story. bad before. I know, game. I know exactly. I mean, he was over there giving away, uh, you know, giving away. Yeah. And uh, James Wheelock and Wildman Samurai. We'll get to your comments. I promise. Mm-hmm. Anybody who's watching us or Please, or even if you're listening to this, uh, you know, on audio, you know, head over to our YouTube, get into the comments and we'll we'll get to them. If we don't get to them today, we'll get to them uh, next week. But uh, we love seeing the comments and we'll get to them. Um, I just want to get through this part of, of of the show real quick for you, Gilbert. Um, the last thing, you know, and, and it'll segue, you know, which. You know, as we said, if there's if the Rams are spending one hundred and ninety five million dollars on offense, that means that they need to spend they need to spend a bunch of their draft capital on defense, which kind of leads us into our engagement question. And that has to do uh, with this. What should the top defensive priority be for the Rams? Um, And that gets us to where we need to get to Gilbert. And, you know, which is the draft needs for the for the for the Rams. How do you want to handle this here? Do you want to go to the comments first, or do you want to get right into the your, their, uh, the yeah, draft well, needs well, for the first, Rams? Let, let people, let, let, let's push people to, hey, answer the question. What should be the top defensive priority for the Rams in the draft? I know we didn't put a uh, draft in there, but this shows more focus for the draft needs defensively. We're going to get to that eventually, but let us know. How will we know what, what to kind of focus on more? If you think it's edge rusher, if you think it's interior defensive line, you think it's a uh, inside linebacker, I think I see Wildman Samurai, and I wanted I wanted to touch on linebacker. Is it a cornerback? Is it safety? They got Cam Curl to a safety. You know, I feel like the secondary looks better. They really focus on the secondary in free agency, but the defensive front, linebacker, uh, edge rusher, defensive tackle, those were I feel like I'm gonna prioritize. But uh, Wildman, you know, because you think about linebackers, you think about Ernest Jones, and like maybe you need one more. It's not really a priority, but uh, you know, I think I saw Lesney said say that. Uh, they, they haven't talked about an extension for Ernest Jones. That makes me wonder, hey, maybe they want to have somebody else just to kind of compete. So definitely, uh, you know, I'm with Wildman there. But let us know in the comments uh, which should be the, which one should be the top priority. We're going to break it all down in a bit, too. Yeah, let me read this for the audio people. Wildman Summarize says, I say we need inside linebacker help for Ernest Jones and edge rushers. Also, the new... With the new rules, we need a solid field goal kicker and a dis- decent kickoff returner. And honestly, talking about yeah. field goal kicker, you might want to go to the UFL because we saw Aubrey uh, from the Cowboys. What's yeah. his name? Aubrey. I'm blanking too. But yes, yeah. yeah, but he came from the USFL, or you, uh, he came from the minor league football league too. So, and I saw somebody kick a 64 yard field goal in the UFL. Oh, so wow. that might be a way to go, Gilbert's. Uh, um, that's just something to keep an, uh, an eye on, but Gilbert, let's get to, you know, let, let's go over some of the, uh, players that the, you know, the Rams could be looking oh, be, at. Before we do that, let me do a quick, uh, promo, uh, Victor, yes, I, I, that way I don't kill the, the flow of the draft talk, but you know, I want to, I want to let everybody know that we're doing something new or well, we started Thanks. something new and, you know, we're doing the compass on the beat newsletter and we would like for everybody to subscribe to that newsletter. So. If you go to compassonthebeat.com, uh, go to the home screen. It could be on your mobile or laptop. Find that gold shiny box. Put in your email there. You're automatically subscribed to a newsletter. We've been doing this for about three weeks, and you know we'll, we'll have Rams coverage in the newsletter. We're gonna we're starting a blog on Compass on the Beat. You know, eventually Victor and myself will you know write more Rams on there. But de- de- definitely do us a favor. Uh, go to compassonthebeat.com and find the gold box in the middle, and then just type in your email and you're subscribed. And, you know, we have fun with it, too. We talk about what's going on with the network and our personal lives. You know, this week we'll talk about WrestleMania 40 in Philadelphia. We'll talk about the experience uh, that we had there because Fernando and myself will be going to Philly. You know, so newsletter and the blog will definitely, for the blog, it's compassonthebeat.com. Is it backslash? Yeah. Uh, blog. So definitely Victor's been writing a lot, a lot about baseball. So uh, check that out. And then one more thing. I know we've been dragging this out, but we're getting closer to a thousand subscribers. So we're trying to get away a Puka Nakua jersey. I want to say one of the Aaron Donald videos that I posted blew up when he retired. I want to say I got 40, 45,000 views, 2,000 likes. And I saw 
that's what we got about 20 subscribers out of it and, or, and overall i had like 70 subscribers so that was awesome to see so aaron donald giving us a push there when he retired the algorithm you know pushed up more aaron donald videos but <laughs> Oh uh, yeah, thought, yeah. People are are screaming for Aaron Donald there, yeah. but we're almost to a thousand subscribers. So what is that? We're I think I saw last time nine twenty five, nine twenty four. So seventy five subscribers. Yeah. When we get to a thousand, we're gonna give away that jersey, and you know, stick around in a bit. Whenever I'll I'll drop randomly uh, keywords for the Puka Nakua jersey, and when you see the keywords, just type them in the live chat or on the the comment section of the replay version of the video. And I'll lock you in for one entry to a Pukunakua jersey. I know many of you are familiar with this, uh, this, you know, this, what do you want to call it? A game or raffle we're trying to give away. But we're getting close so so much closer to 1,000. I'm hoping maybe after the draft we could give away this jersey. Uh, I think we, we definitely could do it. So uh yeah. stay tuned for the Pukunakua jersey giveaway keywords. Yeah, and I mean we're we're getting so close. We're at 923. I mean, you know, we we, we need what like what would you say? Like I, I'm terrible at math. This is why I got into journalism. So, you know, but we're we're close. I know we were around 78 or so. So, you know, we we can't wait. We want to give away this Puka Nakua jersey. So that'll be something to keep an eye on. Like I said, we'll give the uh, Gilbert will give the the keywords, and that way someone will be lucky enough to win a Puka Nakua jersey. Uh, all right, Gilbert, let's get to what you know we are here for and that is to uh go over the uh, rams draft meets on defense i'll let you go ahead and start off where do you want to start you want to start at edge rusher yeah inside let's go, let's go with edge rusher and this is I, I, maybe i want people in the chat to help me out because i can't decide between edge rusher and interior defensive line for where the rams should go but if it is edge rusher let me give you some of the, the names and, and obviously we focus a lot on the first round pick, but some of you guys some of these guys could be available in the second round or even third round. And, and that's kind of sometimes uh the the way the board plays out. You could get some of these guys who are top 50 prospects. I, I, most of these night these names that I got are from Dana Jeremiah's top 50 board. So to give me a good idea where these guys are gonna be. So, you know, most of these guys might be you know, first, second, or third round picks here, but obviously the big three is Dallas Turner from Alabama, Jared Verse from FSU, Leah. Layout to, I said it better. Layout to, lot to, uh, from it. UCLA are like the big three. But then Chop Robinson from Penn State is making a, a big run now. People compare him to Michael Parsons. I don't know about all that, uh, but he has a high motor too. So those seem like the four guys that could be like a first round prospect. And I started doing some, some more digging here. Uh, Darius Robinson from Missouri, uh, Marshawn Neeland from or Neeland. There you go from Western Michigan. And a couple guys could be second round picks, but. You think about you know Byron Young. You think about Michael Hoyt. Byron Young had a great rookie year. Uh, I'm not sure if he's still like like we could discuss it. I don't know how high his ceiling is. He seems like a solid guy. He could be a good number two, or he could be a really good number one. I don't know where he is just yet. Michael Hoyt seems like a guy's gonna be a rotational guy. I'm not saying he's not a good player. It's just it's yeah. been kind of a struggle for him to play more snaps and be a starter. Again, he will he started his career as an interior guy. He went to the outside. He started off very well. I, I remember covering that team in 2022. He did pretty well, but he feels like a third guy. So I think Edge Rusher could be a big spot there. If you're at number 19, Edge Rusher seems right for that. But if you want to get interior defensive linemen, then I don't know if you should stick at get a guy at number 19. Number 19 seems pretty high. But if you get if Dallas Turner's falls, I don't know if he would. He will because the Falcons might get him at number eight. I think that's where they're picking. Uh, then it could be Jared Verse or Latu right there. Maybe you take a chance to chop Robinson, but I, I want to say there you go, Wild Man Samurai. You know, people like Chop Robinson. I don't know where. Like he started, you know, shooting up. Maybe he had a pro day that I missed, and, and he did pretty well. That could be it there too. Uh, but I just haven't seen him in too many mock drafts for the first round. I'm not saying the mock drafts should be uh, what you really should focus on because it's all about your scouting department. Who do you like? You know, what fits your scheme? But he seems like a guy who. You know, it's not the biggest, but has a high motor, very athletic, a lot of moves in, in the in the toolbox there to get around. So that's why the comparison of the Michael Parsons uh, come because he's he was more of a linebacker. He moved to the outside, it became a full time edge rusher. So I get that, but you know, obviously people have different uh, opinions about him. But I want to say I want to make a decision. I think edge rusher should be the number one priority. I don't feel good about that. Uh, but let's move over to interior defensive linemen. Uh, Victor, it's just, you know, you can maybe answer this question. Number 19 seems too rich for me, 
But the problem is, if you want Byron Murphy in the second, Byron Murphy in the second from Texas, who's the number one guy in the interior, and you fall down to like twenty something, you might not get the guy you want. Yeah. Now you get to ask yourself. Uh, hopefully, I don't butcher his name. Jerzon uh, Newton from Illinois. He, he, j- he goes by Johnny. You can just okay. yeah, he, Johnny Johnny Johnny, N- Newton. Johnny Newton. Like if you yeah. if you feel good about getting that guy at 28, 27, whatever whatever you fall down to, you know, he could be a guy, but going off of what I saw from DJ's review, I'm trying to see what I had here. Uh supposedly he's not as good against the run. Like he's right. a really good pass rusher. You know, the thing too that's that's great about this, you're not starting from scratch. Kobe Turner is like I could say more things about Kobe Turner. I feel like Kobe Turner could be that guy. Like Byron Young, I can't tell where the ceiling is, but the high ceiling yes. for Kobe Turner definitely adds more to it. He's a very good pass rusher. I think he's very solid as a run stopper. So, you know, now if you have too many pass rushers and not enough run stoppers, you could fall into trouble. So Johnny, I like he called him. You know, I don't know if that, if that could be the guy. If he could be somebody you could get at, uh, later in the first round. And then after that, it kind of gets thin. As you know, Victor, interior defense alignment, like there's not a lot of them out there. I do like uh, Brandon uh, Fiske from Florida State. I remember watching or listening to his uh, interview at the Combine. So he's a guy who could stand out. And DJ kept calling him a disruptor in every way. If you could disrupt in a variety of, of ways, run stopping, pass rushing, the pocket, that's pretty good. So he could be a guy in the second round. Uh, Mason Smith, another guy I saw, LSU. Chris Jenkins from Michigan. So there are options. But if you want Byron Murphy the second, you might think I'm a number 19. What do you feel about that? Yeah, I think Byron Murphy is the guy if he's there. I mean, we'll see. I mean, I I've been seeing uh different guys being mocked. I I I've heard people talk about John New- Johnny Newton and you know how he how he fits perfectly into that defense that they're trying to run just because he would be a good complement to uh Kobe Turner. Now, yeah. we don't know like that's part of the that's part of the thing as well. I mean, we'll we'll find out with the Rams is always in the last need holds his cards, you know, close to his vest. So, you know, he's someone that, you know, isn't going to, you, you, it's hard to mock the Rams just because we don't know, you know, and we'll talk about it when we get to the offense. And then I, I'm, I also wrote a little something on the newsletter that's coming out. Um, to, so kind of keep an eye on that as well, because I think don't, don't just expect the, the Rams to go, at 19 and go the conventional way and yeah. go with the draft need. But like I said, if Byron Murphy is there, he's the guy. I mean, well, w- is he like the exact prototype as Aaron Donald? No, but he is the best defensive tackle, I think. And with all the quarterbacks that are going to go early, all the skill players and the receivers, there's a, there's 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 guys that are going to fall to 19 that are going to be there for the Rams. And it'll be interesting whether they go Ash rusher, defensive tackle, or a wild card. And, you know, I'll leave it for the newsletter yeah. for you okay. guys to check out uh, as a tease. Yeah, and then nobody was complaining when they drafted Aaron Dahl on number 13, and nobody said that was too high for interior defensive linemen. So maybe I shouldn't yeah. focus too much on that. I think I still lean more on edge rusher. I don't know if Chop Robinson would be my number one. <laughs> I know Latu has the injury concerns, but he look, he, he seems like a guy who's very – like he fits the Ram scheme, like lengthy, athletic, explosive. So James Wheelock, again, also going with Chop Robinson. So maybe I better turn up the tape on Chop Robinson because people are starting to like him a little more. So I thought he was the fourth best from the group in terms of the draft pundits. But, again, it can't be the gospel. You can't just listen to the people that you hear on NFL Network. So I like that people are doing their research there. And then – let me go to the linebacker because I think they do need someone else to go next to, you know, Ernest Jones. Ernest Jones had a great year, but you know, we, we saw with, with the with the Ravens, you got two guys right there. Patrick Queen went to the Steelers, but they had two. And obviously the 49ers have Fred Warner and Dre Greenlaw. So especially hurt. especially with the picks they have, you know, somebody just said, you know, maybe they should trade back. And, you know, uh, and as well, man, some Rams could trade back for extra pick mm-hmm. as well. I mean, you have plenty of picks in this draft. Like, so like linebacker could be somewhere you can take a chance in, in the second and third round, which you're going to talk about. So give us a, the linebacker list that yeah. you have. Yeah, it's not like there's not many guys who might go in the first round linebacker wise. Like it's starting to become a thing now where linebackers don't go in the first round and that being specific inside linebackers. So uh these guys, you know, they're they're ranked higher on, on Dan Jeremiah's board, but they probably would be available in the second or third round. So Edrin uh Cooper, Texas AM, 
when your name is Edge, it would be nice if you play Edge Rusher, but I guess Edger and yeah. James did not play uh, uh, Edge Rusher. He's running back. Yeah. Okay. Uh, Peyton Wilson, North Carolina State. Uh, Junior Colson from Michigan. So that tells you there's only th three linebackers that made down Jeremiah's top 50 board. It's not a very uh, loaded class, but sometimes there's talented guys you know, you yep. could you could get in the third or fourth round. And we know the Rams like to pick in the fifth round, so you never know. And I'll be a little quick with the second there because I really, I really like what they did. Again, you shouldn't settle. Yep. At cornerback, the safety group, I'll start there because I think this is quicker to talk about. Cam Curl answered a lot of you know questions there. I think Cam Curl is a, a, a good uh, safety. I do worry that he was on the worst second there in the NFL last year with the commanders. But, you know, maybe a different, different change of uh, scenery and coaching and players might have Cam Curl. And then you, gotta, you also got to bank on – you got to lean on your draft picks too. Like Russ Yeast and uh, – Quentin Lake, who we had on the show here, like maybe these guys yeah. take a step forward in year uh, year three, right? That, that's why, you know, I, with the cornerback group, you know, I feel better because you also have uh, Kobe Durant. You know, I know he didn't take the step forward as a as a second year guy. I was going to say sophomore, but it's not college. But second year guy, he didn't really take a step forward. Maybe Trey Thomas had finally get some snaps and gets to prove himself. Maybe they feel good about that. But you don't have to panic with Darius Williams and Tredavious White. I'm not saying you should settle. But I think guys like Terran Arnold, Quinion Mitchell, Nate Wiggins, Cooper DeJean, maybe the Rams won't go for in the first round because they feel good about the position. Uh, but maybe like a, a Ennis, uh, hopefully I don't butcher his last name, Ennis Rakestraw from uh, Junior from Missouri. A Kool-Aid could be there from Alabama. Maybe, maybe like a second-round prospect, uh, Max Melton from Rutgers. So definitely get another cornerback, but maybe second, third round, uh, whatever it is. But I, I think when we were talking – last time we spoke, uh, Victor – we thought cornerbacks would be a top priority in the first round. Not so much anymore. Yeah, I mean, and and it just tells you how things change. And, I mean, you know, with all the, the picks, you know, they have five extra com now, you know, extra picks because of their com compensatory picks. So, they, you know, Les Need has a lot to play with here. You know, he, he, he is going to be able to, you know, go and get talent. And I would not be surprised, Gilbert, if the majority of these draft picks are going to be on the defensive side of the ball. I mean, you know, you also have, we also have to think about special teams as well. We saw how, you know, bad they ranked, you know, on, on special team defensively. Mm -hmm. Also, they weren't, they didn't create a lot of pressure. Now you don't have Aaron Donald, to, you know, get triple team. So there's also that as well. So I, I like, I like your list just because, you know, especially for needs, you need an, you need an edge rusher to complement Byron Young, you know, which you can still go out in the free agent market and get. The same thing with safety, as you talked about. You They got Cam Curl, but there's also still a Justin Simmons out there you can go and get if you need safety help, you know, if you're not happy with your young guys. And I, I wanted to get to Delver's question here because he's like, I just got on, but I would like to hear uh, DC Shula, what DC Shula prefers. Good defensive prospect this year. Speed knows to the ball, always good. But that's the other thing. I have not heard how this defense is going to be, you know, how, how they're going to be used or how they're going to, you know, how, how is it going to be different than what we saw from Raheem Morris? I mean, he might like different kind of players. So that is something that's also up in the air, Gilbert. Yeah, and, you know, it's tough to tell where they want to go, but, like, Lesney still around, and he's the one that got really aggressive for you know Brian Burns with the two first round pick offer that they, they you know stupid not to accept it, but they didn't accept it. That makes me feel like number nineteen or first round is going to be an edge rusher because you know last year they couldn't make that many moves. They didn't have a first round pick. They didn't have much money in the sal in this the, with the salary cap. And then this year they didn't really they didn't force it because what you're going you're going to pay Daniel Hunter who's you know over thirty. You know, obviously it helps the Texans, but I don't know if I like that for the Rams. Other than that, it, it got pretty thin. You're going to take a chance on Bryce Huff and Jonathan Grenard, these one-year breakout guys. Like, it, it's risky. So I think they're probably waiting for the draft. There's maybe somebody they like. Could be Chop Robinson. Could be Latu. Could be Turner. Uh, it could be Jared Verse. I don't know. But I, I just feel like just because of Les Need, his, he values Ezra Rusher really high. And also, it just helps knowing that Kobe Turner was a guy last year. He's a blue chip prospect. He's a cornerstone piece. And like, obviously, he looks better playing next to Aaron Donald, but it just gives you a starting point. And, you know, I feel like one of those two positions are going to be addressed early on. 
but yeah. you know, like, and but obviously for sure, it's gonna be a lot of defense in the draft because they need more talent. They need to keep adding there. You know, you can't just settle with the veteran guys. You got to keep adding. You got to find what you did last year with, with with Puka and 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 you know Steve Ivory, like guys like that. You want to have good young guys on defense too as well. But it worked out with Ernest Jones. It worked out with Kobe Turner, and it worked out with Byron Young. Just keep adding more to it. Yeah, and I mean, you know, as we talked about with all the with with, with all the draft picks they have, I mean, I wouldn't, you know, also, I, I yeah. And while well, men summarize, we all know McVeigh and C will go after an offensive weapon or two as yeah. well. Yeah, they will. And that'll be something to keep an eye on as well. I mean, I'm not as much as I, I like I said, I would not be surprised if the majority of them they're still going to try to get a. And we'll talk about it with when it comes. Yeah. You know, next, next week, week we'll next week we'll focus on the offense. That's why a I lot of good wide receivers and tackles. So definitely yeah. keep an eye on. Yeah, that. so it'll be something that we'll talk about next week. But you're right, while well, men summarize, they're gonna talk about some of those items but i think i'm i'm with you as well gilbert i think that if byron murphy falls there to 19 i think you know you have you should take you should take your defensive tackle there now if it comes down to edge rusher i the guy i really like because i saw him and he kind of reminds me of max crosby is liatu latu i just think he has a bunch of moves and he's able to you know you know of course the the thing that 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 kind of the the thing that kind of worries me about him is 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 his injury concern. Yeah. You know, but we saw with Jalen Phillips, he had the same situation. He he was able to play. He ended up getting his knee hurt. That was a different kind of you know situation. So that would be my only my only concern yeah. with he's him. He's a little thin too. It might take him some time to get kind of get right. his body right. But he's very athletic and like you mentioned, a lot of moves. So. You know, like when guys like that who who are fundamentally sound and are just not like predictable, and you make more moves, like they tend to do well right away. It's just he seems a little kind of thin and a little undersized to me. That's about it. Yeah, and yeah, I mean maybe like a Dallas Turner falls. I know everybody's mocking, you know, him to the Falcons, but we'll see. Maybe they, yeah. maybe the Falcons decide, hey, if one of those receivers is there, they <laughs> they might go receiver there. You never know. It's just the the you know. That's why I don't like to go off the mock draft yeah. because we all fall, you know. Uh, he's Maybe the Rams um, trade up. We don't know. I know usually yeah. they might trade out, but you never but know. Yeah. yeah. Uh, all right. Well, Wildman Summary says he really liked the live stream. Congrats on the channel growing. Horns up. I'm out. Hey, thanks for joining Thank us. You. We appreciate it. Uh, appreciate he always it. leaves. They, he always leaves comments. So it's good that he's he's. Uh, he is joining us live here. And then Delbert Sagato says, agreed on improving special teams. Linebackers, running backs, tight ends usually make the squad this way. Mm -hmm. Intense training camp competition will be the difference. Can hardly wait. So there's a lot to discuss, Gilbert, but I'm with you. Like I said, I'm I'm either going to – I'm either I'm, – I'm, I'm leaning edge rusher or defensive tackle. But, you know, with the Rams, it's kind of hard to predict which way they're going to go in the first round. Yeah, you know, it's tough because I still feel like they need another tackle, which we'll get into next week. You know, maybe, like you mentioned, wide receiver wouldn't be a problem. You know, maybe cornerback is still, like, if you're number 19 and, and there's still a lot of good cornerbacks, like, you know, always go best player available. So, like, you know, maybe they have a, they have a bigger needs at interior defensive line, the bigger needs at edge rusher, but you see a Quinion Mitchell or a, a Teron Arno, like if you're going to go and get the best player available. Like you, you, can you trust your Davis white to stay healthy? Can he be ready to go for training camp? Like Darius Williams, like, you know, obviously they brought in, you know, it was a John Johnson last year. It, he wasn't the same guy. Like these, these kind of reunions, they don't always work out. So, yep. you know, don't just settle. Like, obviously we're focusing more edge rusher and interior, but if Terry on Arno's there, a Quinion Mitchell, uh, maybe even a Cooper DeJean or a Nate Wiggins, go best player available. Yeah, and, and just see what happens. Yeah, I'm I'm with you. I'm I'm always under. I, I always like the going with the best player available. I think you get in trouble when you go for draft need, but like I get it. I mean, the the Rams have draft needs at edge rusher and as well as defensive tackle. But when you have those kind of talented players on the board, if they're there, I think it's kind of hard not to pull the trigger like on a uh, on a Byron Murphy or some yeah. of those guys we mentioned, you know, whether, whether it's a Chop Robinson, you know, or a Jared Verse, you know, a Layatu Latu, you know, all, Dallas Turner. If any of those guys fall to you, it's kind of hard not to pull the trigger. But 
you know, we'll we'll see. Let me let's get to these comments, Gilbert. I want to make sure well, we hold on. Let me do the let me do it right yes, now. Let it. me do the, the keywords right here. We got people in the chat, so why not? Uh, if you're new here, we're trying to get, give away a Puka Nakua jersey when we get to a thousand subscribers. If you haven't su uh, subscribed to the channel, please do it right now. But to enter this raffle for the jersey, type in these keywords right here. You got it. I couldn't look for it, I could, or I couldn't find it. But uh, the Puka Nakua jersey giveaway keywords, just type in defensive front because we were talking about defensive front a lot on this episode. Uh, that's interior linebacker and edge rusher and interior defensive lineman. So uh, you got to have a good defensive front in the NFL. So just type in type in defensive front in the live chat or in the comment section of the replay video. And that's one entry to the Puka Nakua jersey giveaway. And like we mentioned, we're getting so close to a thousand subscribers. You know, I got to do my work eventually. I got to track all these and, and do all the tabbing there. Uh, but if you want an extra entry, I keep forgetting about this. Send me an email, uh, Gilberto at Compass on the Beat .com. Gilbert with the note at Compass on the Beat .com. Give me the keywords, defensive front. Give me the time that we dropped it. And then your username on YouTube and your real name. That would kind of make sure everything's organized. I will get, I will sit down and I'll get everybody's uh, uh, raffle tickets, you know, organized and ready to go. That way, when we, when we get to a thousand, We'll do that raffle and give it away. Hopefully, we give it away uh, after the after the draft, and that way yeah. uh, we'll be ready for twenty twenty four. Good name there, Gilbert. Uh, shout out to you, Tokayo. Gilbert Ruiz says defensive front. Thank you for dropping in there for uh, for one entry to Pukunakua jersey giveaway. There we go, and you know we'll we'll get to these comments now. Um, you know, uh, I just want to make sure that I I put this up one more last time. Give everybody a couple more seconds to be able to get it in. Like I said, it's not going to go away, but I just want to make sure that people see it and that way they can go ahead and uh, enter themselves into this Puka N uh, Nakua jersey giveaway. All right, Gilbert, let's get to these comments. I want to make sure that we pay off people who join us on this live chat, uh, uh, live stream as we call it as well. Let me get to, let me give you a banner real quick. Let's get to these comments. Um, all right, let's start off with James Wheelock here. He says, sign another veteran for two games or so. I do not trust Bennett. So uh, what, what are your thoughts on that, Gilbert? I'm with you, James. Like I mentioned at the top of the show, like it's a little nerve wracking, you know, knowing that Jimmy G is out for two games and then Stetson Bennett is going to come back and like he couldn't do it last year. Can he do it this year? But it's just two games. Obviously, you want Stafford to be healthy. But if something happens, I don't know. I don't know about trusting Stetson Bennett to be that guy. But like, say the suspension happened, like it was in October or something. Sure, but the first two games of the year, it's I don't know. Maybe you need to sign a fourth guy. But if you sign a fourth guy, why the heck did you spend a draft pick on this guy? You can't even rely on him to be the the suspension backup. There you go. Yeah, I mean it, it's a fair point as we said and. May, you know, like I said, you only spend a four round pig and you can get out of it at this point. So we'll see what happens there. He has another question, maybe a backup running back. I think you draft one, right? We'll we'll talk about it next week, but yeah. I think that's a, that's that's well, somewhere you Well put it this way. Last year when they were hurting that running back and they got was it Freeman and they got Ronnie um, Rivers and well, they had Well Rivers is okay, but when they got Freeman and the I forgot it, why am I blanking on his name? The guy from that went to Memphis or Yes, came, I know you're talking about it. Back, I don't um, know why, because I picked him up on my fantasy team. Jesus Christ. And um, he played for the yeah, Rams for many yeah, years. But... <laughs> I'm like blanking on his name right now. Somebody yeah. tell us in the chat who, who are we talking about. The running, the running back that used to play for the Rams, went to the Jaguars, got cut, and came back. I don't know why I can't remember. Oh, wow. it's really We're like me. blanking right now. But, uh, uh, yeah, that didn't work out too well. Freeman had his moments, but I think I'll draft a running back. And, and Ronnie Rivers, you know, obviously he doesn't have enough. Like, he's not consistent enough, but he's showing flashes, and he just – he seems like a guy who works hard and he's very good on special teams. So I don't, I don't mind giving Ronnie Rivers. Uh, is it Darius? No, Darius Williams, obviously. Why am I forget? No, no, got it. Daryl Hen no, yeah, Henderson. Daryl Henderson. Yes, Daryl Henderson. Jeez. There we go. Wow. I knew it was with a D. Yes. Yeah, but, but it didn't work yeah. out that well with Daryl Henderson 2.0. Yeah, and then we got Wildman Samurai who left already, but he did. He said we need another running back. Audric Estemi out of Notre Dame mm. would be a perfect compliment uh, yeah. for Kyron Williams. So, and he's from Notre Dame as well, so that would be a great fit. Uh, uh, he's he's done well in the NFL. So, and Notre Dame running backs do you, usually do well in the NFL. So, uh, that's never a bad way to go as uh, as well. Um, uh, we have. 
James Wheelock said they, they want he wants someone who can create turnovers. That's why he likes uh, Chop Robinson Not, from Penn State. You better have a, is that is that what is what's his real name? Is it really Chop or does he have a really good Chop move that that's yeah. why they call him that? I don't know. We we if we need to do some uh, some research if he gets drafted by the Rams, that'll be some, something to keep an eye on. Um, we went over that one. We went over that one. Uh, we went over that one. Uh, we had uh, and then Gilbert Ruiz, your Tokayo says edge rusher at swell. Um, yeah, you know that'll be something to keep an eye on. I think I think we can all agree it's either going to be edge rusher, defensive tackle. And then maybe linebacker, and then we'll see if they need. Um, here we go. Delver Salgado asks if trading down, which players do we include in a package? If trading down, uh, well, it's usually it's usually draft picks. Like you know, if well, if you trade up, you got to be the one giving up stuff. But yeah. if you're, if, uh, if you're trading down, people they're going to give you stuff. Maybe maybe a future. You know, say you take somebody's. You know, especially since it's in nineteen. You might yeah. be trading down in the first round, and maybe you can get like a a second or, or another third, pick up an extra draft pick here and there. Yeah, maybe you the, get two third round picks if you go to the second round, an extra this year and an extra next year, things like that. They're different scenarios, but maybe you don't want to trade too far down, and you want to you know get to the back end of the first round. It could be an extra third round pick this year or next year. Who knows? But uh, nineteen, you don't get as much as you get when you're like in the top ten, but. It's a it's it's enough packages where it's a good enticing package where you get enough draft picks to keep getting like top one hundred players. Yeah, and the thing to kind of keep an eye on, especially with all these compensatory picks with the Rams, yeah, is that gives them ammo to go trade up like in the second or third round. If there's guys on their board that are rated higher than most people feel, like we saw with Puka with Kyron, they're gonna trade some of those compensatory because you can't. Not everybody that they draft is going to make the the roster. So at this point, yeah, maybe last year all of those guys made the roster. But now as you're starting to look for depth, you you kind of trade some of those compensatory picks for guys on your board that are rated higher. All right, Gilbert, last one uh, from uh, from Michael Armenta. He says, edge rusher, but who if need and, and, and McVay I trust? That's and that's the grand question. I I still think it's gonna be edge rusher, but who does Les Snead like? Obviously, people keep trying to you know pinpoint to Snead liking you know guys who are very athletic, a lot of moves in the toolbox. They don't have to be the biggest uh, edge rusher. They don't have to be like the the bulkiest. I, we all think about Leonard Floyd and guys like that. Uh, but I don't know. That's gonna be the mystery. But I I do feel like it's gonna be edge rusher because. Les Need does value with like most GMs do edge rusher, and you don't really have too many game changers at the position. Yeah, I'm I'm with you. I mean, especially now with Aaron Donald's retirement, you're gonna need pressure, you know, from your defensive line. You know, I mean, Michael Hoyt, as you talked about, he should be a rotational guy, not a starter. Uh, you need to add guys either whether you add them during the free during the draft or during free agency there's still a lot of options you know one of the things that i heard you know was brought up just from listening to people this week is like free agency is great but like a lot of the super bowl teams are built over the summer you see guys who get released and end up on a team and they end up having you know they end up having you know uh uh, uh they are able to contribute to a super bowl team so you know, whatever you're seeing right now, yeah, we like what the Rams are doing right now, but there's still a lot of time to be, you know, f- to to fix this team and 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 fill some of the, you know, positional needs that they need for 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 the 2024 season. Yeah, it's always better to go through the draft and with you know free agency. I I get it if you're a, like a super contender and you just need a couple moves, but even then, it's like right now a lot of, a lot of the talk is the Houston Texans like. I don't know. I feel like they gave up a lot on Stephon Diggs, a second round pick, for being possibly the number three wide receiver, maybe number two. I, I'm the the jury's still on Tank Dale, but it just seemed like a lot. And then they went all in for Daniel Hunter. They went all in for Joe Mixon. Well, they didn't really spend too much on Mixon, but sometimes like you you get too uh, caught up on the name and the the past and the history, and you, and they, you see the cool graphics on Instagram. They got Joe Mixon and Stephon Diggs. Yeah. Well, yeah, it would have been not, their it would, office is gonna look yeah, like it would have been better. It would have looked better to me in 2020 and 2021, but we're in 2024, so things change yeah. quickly in the NFL. Like, again, three years they do matter. So 
uh, it's always that time of year where people get a lot of hype. So I'm, I'm kind of, you know, iffy on the Texans because when you spend too much in March, it, it does work out sometimes, but it works out better in the draft. And the Rams know that from what happened last year. Yeah. And one of the things as, as, you know, as the comment said, you know, in McVay and Lee Lesney, you know, they trust and it's, it's true. I mean, they have a track record. They know what they want. And, you know, like I, like I, I, you know, I mentioned earlier, if you missed it, go check out the article with Jordan Rodrigue, the one that she did with, you know, um, uh, what is his name again? Let me go back. I always forget. Tony I'm sorry. Pastorus. I'm yeah. Sure. Pastors. Yeah. Tony Pastors, who is the vice president of a football operation. He's the guy who does the contracts for the Rams. And, you know, it kind of, you know, they, they, he, they went over, you know, they explained why they're doing three-year deals and why, you know, they're they're lining things up with, you know, Puka Nakua, Steve Avila, and Kyron Williams is because they know the talent that they have and they need a, you know, they're going to build around it. And so, and then once Stafford and Cooper Cub move on, they become the core players and then they need to, you know, build around them. So I, I thought that was, that was a, a really good article to go check out, especially as a Rams fan. You know, it's something that, you know, it, it gives you a lot of information there. And uh, I thought, you know, it'll be something to kind of keep in mind during the summer as they construct, they, they continue to construct this uh, roster, Gilbert. Yeah, it's always a good sign when uh, you have a core group waiting for the other core group to finish and like you're just ready to go. So the way they blended veterans and young guys and rookies last year. It really put them in a good spot. So obviously the focus is on defense, but this is still a very good roster overall, and it should get better to the draft. All right, Gilbert. So I said I'd get you out of here in an hour. Uh, we're at 57 minutes. So uh, we do have about three minutes here. So I want to take this chance to uh, for you to uh, let's let's uh, promote the newsletter again because it's, it's yeah. something important that we're doing. I, I really have enjoyed my time being able to write there. I wrote a couple of blurbs on the Rams, and I think people should go and check it out. You also wrote something on it, but just please, like, just uh, let's use this to promote the the rest of the what we have going on on Columbus on the beat. Yeah, if you if you're new here, you know the the main. I guess uh, the the main umbrella here that we're doing is called Compass on the Beat. That's uh, the main network, and you know under Compass on the on the Beat we have House of Horns, we have What's Up Boats, and that's more of a Chargers channel. We have we're trying to build up Combat Compass, but a lot of, we do a lot of Combat Sports on the main channel, Compass on the Beat. So we're doing pretty well with audio and YouTube and you know Instagram and all that stuff. A lot of you know visual. We want to start doing more writing. And obviously, newsletters are very big nowadays. You know, blogs are still pretty big too. I have on a website. So to make the next make the next step here for Compass on the Beat is uh, doing the newsletter. And you know, it's, it's been pretty uh, pretty fun to do. A little challenging to how to figure out how to do a, a newsletter, but we've been uh, having a good variety of giving you sports an an analysts or, or an analyzing the sports world, and not just uh, you know football, but a little bit of everything. Right now is WrestleMania. We're gonna talk about boxing. You know, Devin Haney versus Ryan Garcia, Canelo Alvarez versus Jaime, Jaime Munguia. So a little bit of everything, but definitely a lot of Rams coverage there. Victor, you know, wrote something today uh, that will come out on Thursday. So the newsletter comes out every Thursday morning. Go to compassonthebeat.com. You know, when you go to the home screen, like a shiny gold box is going to pop up on your phone, laptop, whatever it is. Just type in your email there and subscribe to the Compass on the Beat newsletter. We're going to hit your inbox every Thursday. And then whenever you write on the blog, we also have a blog. Uh, Victor's been writing, writing a lot about baseball. We might send you an email. Hey, check out the new blog. So uh, just be, you know, subscribe, you know, get the emails from us. And there will definitely be a, a big help for growing the network here at Compass on the Beat. We've had a great 2023. We have, we're having a good start in 2024. But the next step is doing more writing. Obviously, we're all writers for our day jobs. But mm -hmm. here at the network, you want to add a little more. So uh, it's been uh, some challenges ha having to grow a, a media network. Obviously, you got to compete with with people, the big p the big companies in the world. Uh, but for us, the next step is uh, news the newsletter and the website compassonthebeat.com. Yeah, and it's a great website as we as we try to you know make it grow. But um, yeah, like you know we're trying to built this and you know thanks to you gilbert you giving us the opportunity whether it's fernando dan and myself so it you know we're we're just trying to make this grow and honestly it's all thanks to the people who watch this channel i mean 
you know, uh, we're on the verge of getting to a thousand subscribers and it's because people like this content and we appreciate you guys and the feedback that you guys give us. I mean, shout out to everybody who's in the comments, Delbert, James, Wildman, Samurai, you know, um, Gilbert, Ruiz, uh, Michael Armenta, people who continue to come back. That's what we like seeing. So thank you so much for, you know, the support. And if you have the time, go and check out the newsletter because we really appreciate it's It's our way of giving back as well. Just giving you guys a, a little bit of writing from ourselves. Yeah. And it's pretty cool that you know, many, many people find us, you know, for the Rams coverage and, and Rams are their favorite team and they root for the LA Rams. And, but they don't mind, you know, seeing what's going on with the network on Compass on the Beat. Again, we talk about different types of sports. We talk about pop culture. We, we'll rate a movie or we'll bash a movie. We'll talk about what's going on, going on in our lives, what's going on in the network. So it's been pretty cool to see people check out Compass on the Beat who, are, who, are, who started with House of Horns. Uh, I see Delbert in the chat pretty often. So, that's pretty cool to see that people are liking both sides. And, you know, media is changing nowadays. And, you know, the traditional media, obviously, you can have your ESPN. You could, you know, check out, you know, or even for website, check out other uh, other outlets. Yeah, we, but, just, we just got uh, uh, Gilbert Ruiz. He just. Uh, hey, the Tocayo. Thank you. Yeah, thank you. So we appreciate yeah, that. So that's awesome. Yeah. yeah. But the main thing is, like, you know, we've been doing it for a couple of years. And the support that we get on house of horns and le that leading to compass on the beat and, and kind of putting it all together. has been pretty cool to see. Yeah. We, we really appreciate it as we said, and you know, send, send questions like, yeah. um, you know, Gilbert's been busy for the last couple of weeks. So whenever I can, you know, we can get them on and be able to, you know, do this live stream. We, you know, like I said, we're coming back next week. We're going to do the offense. We're going to concentrate on that. And then we'll have some draft specials, you know, depending on, what time Gilbert has, we'll, we'll, we'll do a recap of the draft and we'll go, we'll go over. But now that the, that the network is growing the house of horns, we can do more, more, more episodes. And so the, the more we get over a thousand subscribers, the more episodes we can do. Yeah. So that also yeah. helps as well. That goes a long way, but Gilbert, yeah. I've kept you over an hour now. So go ahead and close us out. I, I, you know, shout out to everybody who stuck with us. We got over 126 viewers. So awesome to see that as well. Always. We appreciate yeah. it. Yeah. And a, a quick promo next week, we'll be back at it, you know, a Wednesday around this time, 630 Pacific. And uh, we'll write down the offense. And then, you know, I think we might take a, a one week off the week after that. And then the week of the NFL draft, we're going to give you a full preview about the Rams draft needs. I'll be offense, defense, the latest going on with the Rams, just, We'll have, we'll, have, we'll have fun with that show, and who knows, man? We'll have a couple of shows uh, during the after the draft, or I guess after the first round, second round, whatever it is, to really break it all down. So uh, stick with us here on, on House of Horns, part of the Compass on the Beat Network. We appreciate the support. Shout out to Gilbert Ruiz for a great name and uh, subscribing to the Compass on the Beat newsletter. But on that note, ya nos vamos, pues vámonos.